Hey guys, I got another uh, micro build here on the channel for you. This is the BB Bombshell, and this is for two and a half inch props. And so if you multi GP guys are interested in a new frame, this is kind of unique and different. So I wanted to check it out. I've already uh, just put the bare frame together so you guys can see what it looks like. I'll give you some measurements here in a second. I'm going to be doing this build here, all the parts below. I'll show you that in a second, but let me just give you some measurements. Okay, so the main plate is about two and a half millimeters. The top plate is about two millimeters. And then you got these two side plates here, which is going to be for the Micro Swift. And these side plates come in at about two millimeters. So we get a weight measurement of the frame just by itself, the bare frame, and comes in at about 20, almost 27 and a half grams. So it's a pretty beefy frame. So let me go over all the uh, parts I'll be putting in this build here. I'm going to start off here with the new Gem Fan 1105 7500 kV motors. These are pretty nice looking. I, haven't, I obviously haven't tried them yet, but uh, they look nice. Uh, I think that these will be some pretty good motors. They got some nice silicone wire here. Uh, so I think this is going to be a good motor. We'll see. And I'm not doing a 4-in-1 ESC or a power cube in this one. I'm going to be putting uh, these individual ESCs on the arms. These are the Tattoo Racer Star 8 amp BL Heli 32 ESCs. So these are the, the new 32 bit ESCs. We'll do D Shot 1200. We'll test that out, see how, uh, if, if there's much of a performance improvement or not. And I'll, and I'll be doing this on 2S anyway because this is for multi GP, so no 3S on these. I'm going to be going with the Omnibus. Uh, F3 Nano or Micro. This is the 20 by 20 Omnibus F3, and it's got F3 chip here and built-in PDB and OSD chip. I'm uh, going to be going with the original Micro Swift, so uh, should have some very good video performance. And the video transmitter I'm going to be using here is this Micro EWRF model. Uh, this is power switchable, I believe, uh, 0, 25, and 200 milliwatts. And this also features the uh, smart audio feature so you can change your bands and channels via the Betaflight OSD. So it should be interesting to use. And I think I'm going to swap out this antenna here. I want a little bit longer antenna to get away from the frame. So I'll probably put a little bit longer antenna on this one instead of the one that's on here. Okay, so here's a quick look at what I've done so far. I've mounted the flight controller uh, on some nylon screws using some rubber o-rings basically it's soft mounted so with the flight controller soft mounted I'm not going to soft mount the motors you don't usually need to soft mount both of them uh, but because there's a lot of space here I, it gives me an opportunity to soft mount the flight controllers so I won't have to soft mount the motors so after I mounted the flight controller I uh, soldered on my ESC's to each of the four motor pads positive negative and signal and then I have a little pigtail here for my receiver. It's going to be a FlySky receiver. And that's pretty much it for the moment. The next step that I'm going to be taking is mounting the motors, solder on the motor wires, and then I'm going to wrap the ESC and motor wires in electrical tape so that they're protected. After that, I'm going to uh, wire up my uh, video transmitter and my camera. And it should be pretty close to being done. There's not a whole lot to this build. Pretty simple, but... Uh, this is this this part here takes probably the longest putting the flight controller on and soldering all of these wires for each individual EC, which is why I like doing the four in one ECs for most builds. But I have these Racer Star ECs, I'm gonna test them out, so no way to get around that. Gotta solder up each wire individually. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the motors mounted. No soft mounting on the motors. And I just ran the motor wire looped it around and soldered it onto the ESC pads and then just wrapped the whole thing in electrical tape to secure everything down. Uh, next I'm going to wire up the FPV system. Basically I'm going to use a voltage regulator because the regulator on this uh, Omnibus F3 isn't going to be enough to support all the components. I'm going to use a Palolo and uh, I'm going to hook up everything to that and then, then wire the Palolo directly to the battery lead so it's going to get direct battery voltage. Okay, so this is a rather complicated FPV setup here. Um, you can try and follow the wires. I've got 
voltage coming into this Pololo here and then I got voltage coming out. One goes to the camera and one goes to the video transmitter. That would be the red and black cables. The yellow cable is video going to the OSD. And you got video in and video out there. One goes to the video transmitter, one goes to the camera. I have tried to get the um, smart audio to work and supposedly it's that middle pin right there between those five pins. And I've moved it from, I've tried moving it on the spectrum port here which is UR2 then I tried remapping the UR to the LED pin over here using resource remapping. But for some reason I'm not able to get the smart audio to work on this EWRF video transmitter so I'm going to work on that later and finish up this build and uh, uh, we'll figure that out at some other point in the future but uh, that's essentially the the way the FPV system is set up and I've obviously got my receiver plugged in here on this little pigtail so I'm going to go ahead I'll put the top on mount the camera and we'll uh, finish up this build and I'll uh, show you what it looks like uh, all, all done okay so here it is completely assembled got the top on and I have uh, the video transmitter zip tied to the top there with the little LED showing through the window. I did put on a longer antenna here just to, so it would extend past the carbon here so it would be more, I'd get better reception. And see on the bottom here I just have my rubber band for mounting my battery. Uh, the little uh, receiver antenna is just going to stick out of the bottom here. It's being uh, secured here with the rubber band. I got two and a half inch props on here, but I think we can get some bigger props on here. I think the King Kong 2.8 inch props might also work on these. Not sure about the clearance in the front though. You can see there's not much clearance right here between the prop and the side plate, but more in the back. Uh, one of the reasons I like this design is you can get lots of lots of camera tilt if you want. I could I could probably point this 60 degrees up. I have it probably close to 40, 45 degrees right now and uh, the camera is well protected. You can see that those two side plates should absorb most impacts unless you hit it of course straight on but you can get a lot of camera tilt in this one and probably go pretty fast uh, with this uh, design. Alright, let's see what the final weight of this turns out to be. And it's coming in at about 86.6 grams, so a little on the heavy side, but the, I think it's because the carbon is very thick and uh, pretty heavy. Plus you have these metal standoffs and metal screws here, you could probably go for some lighter ones. But it's a little on the heavy side, we'll see how it flies. Like these Gemfan 1105 motors shouldn't have any problem with uh, dealing with the weight. Okay, so there's um, not much uh, to the flashing of the firmware on this. I have Betaflight 3.2 in here. I think I've got the latest release, RC5 I believe. I have a video about Betaflight flashing. I'll put a card in the corner. You guys can watch that. Uh, nothing too uh, different here. And just basically flash it and uh, configure your receiver, set your modes, and uh, you can do all of your uh, pin tuning through the OSD. So go ahead at this point I'll go ahead and take it out to the field and show you a little line of sight and uh, FPV footage. Pretty smooth right off the get-go. I don't hear any oscillations or fluttering. Alright, let's give it a little punch out here. Not bad. Come on back. Not bad. All right, let's fly it around a little bit. Ooh. Pretty windy, it's getting pushed around a little bit. Plenty of power. Wind's picking up even more. Let's uh, see some flips here.
flips, no problem. Three flips, no problem. Pretty good power. Your tune's pretty good too. I am running Betaflight 3.2 on here with the dynamic filter on. I think I lowered, stock pins, but I lowered the D-gain a little bit. Just, just in case, you don't want to smoke any motors, but I think I'll check the motors just in case here. I think they, they sound fine. I don't expect them to be hot at all. Yeah, they're totally fine. Totally fine. That Betaflight 3.2 with a dynamic filter, if you have things soft mounted and uh, vibration free, good props, I think you're good to go. I uh, definitely recommend uh, going to Betaflight 3.2.